So, we have stopped somewhere between regional and global perspective. Let's go global. The energy transition implies that thousands of power systems around the world should be transformed with a pace which has never been seen before. And while we know how should look, what should look like the picture on the global level, that is still a question how should it be um, translated into regional levels. And what is special about this global scale energy planning problem is that we should plan decades ahead under deep uncertainties. And uh, basically we have quite an experience of energy policy filters. There have been quite a few cases when energy policy measure, measures looked quite reasonable in advance, but have resulted in failures, have didn't uh, mm, lead to results which have been expected, and uh, these programs should be stopped. And that is why actually we need large-scale energy modeling. We can replace this painful experience of real world vultures by playing with uh, modeling, with energy models. And uh, obvious um, advantages of open source, of open modeling and open data for energy planning has led to a rapid increase in interest towards open energy modeling. And currently we have dozens of open energy models. We have a lot of open data sets relevant for energy modeling, but the picture is very incomplete and very patchy, and there are regions in the world where we do not have even a net zero plan, not to say open net zero plan. And that is exactly the gap which we are addressing as independent research initiative. Pipe Summit's Earth aims to provide every part of the world with the open and reproducible and accessible energy systems model. What we are doing can be um, divided by three blocks. First of all, we are doing open coding, indeed. We are working with open data and we support energy, open energy modeling community. So just a reminder about energy systems model. There are, um, I would say, power engineering models, that is uh, tools which we are mainly have discussed today, and there are also academic integrated assessment models. Academic uh, integrated assessment models relate to the whole world and model global scale, large scale, interconnections between economics, environment, and energy. And energy systems model, that is kind of tool which translates these results of global assessment into plan of actions on the regional scale. And obviously, energy systems model should mm, contain, should reproduce in realistic way, behavior of uh, power systems. So that is what our work workflow, what our architecture look like. We have data block, we have modeling block, and we have optimization block. Everything is orchestrated by SnakeMate. And well, probably the most trying part of the whole picture is work with data. There are different groups of data which affect operation of power system and um, there is also quite trivial but very impactful moment which relates directly to um, open data licensing. Um, basically, we have starters data kit which we provide with the model to facilitate starting with modeling. And um, I think the most frequent um, how to start request is about loading this starter kit's data. And many troubles by created by the fact 
that some open li some licenses of open data set do not allow redistribution rehosting of the data. So for some data, we can, we can um, collect data set and transform it in the form which is needed for energy system model to run, while for others, we do not have right to redistribute and have provide data to sources and connect them with um, um, scripts to clean data and to prepare them um, to a format which can be used by energy modeling. And that is exactly chain of the whole link which breaks most frequently. So just open data in action. Environmental and climate, that is part of the data workflow where we are truly grateful to open science community and to geophysical community. Uh, basically, that is the most um, unproblematic part of the whole workflow and um, we have package which translates geophysics to energy related parameters and basically that's it. Mainly it just works. But as for electricity demand, here, the biggest problem is data availability. Indeed, uh, well, what we need are hourly demand profile for every country of the world, at least um, at uh, national, at aggregated national level. Indeed, the data exist, but they are not openly available. And so <clears throat> we have a model, we have machine learning model, which has reproduced synthetic um, load profiles, but we would be very happy to improve flexibility and geographic coverage of this approach. And access to the data to um, um, original load profiles, that is bottleneck currently for this group. Another um, important part, another part which is crucial if you are interested to model a power system of some arbitrary country is um, data on power infrastructure, especially on grid. And here we have used OpenStreetMap database and uh, developed uh, a dedicated package which extracts power futures and uh, mm, allows to prepare, to, to prepare model of grid topology. Apart of that, we have packages from PIPSA ecosystem, which provides mm, data on power plants, on installed generation, and uh, a data set which collects and curates data on mm, technology costs, including mm, forecasted, f forecasts for technology, f forecasts of uh, technologies development. So, and that is what modeling workflow look like. We take pre-processed pre data for power infrastructure and uh, simplify topology, preserving electrical properties of original power grid, then cluster it to make the, prob the problem tractable. And the next point is the most challengeable from the perspective of open source, because open solvers are still overplayed by commercial solutions. And uh, here there, are, there is some room for improvement, and we are collaborating with developers of open solver to improve the situation. And now, once the workflow has been established, we had to be in to, to, to ensure that it is actually possible to apply our model for every country in the world in the most literal sense. It, has, it took about um, almost a year work to introduce all the necessary fixes which um, account for different um, special futures. And now it is done. That is linked to Etsenodo repo, which contains schemes for power systems of every country of the world, 
of 193 United States country. And we also have the code, the source code, which we have used to produce these schemes, these images. And if you are interested in model any country of the world, please feel free to do that. Now let's look what actually can we obtain if we apply this approach. That is net zero study for Nigeria, which we have used um, in course of development, the model, which we have used as kind of proof of concept. And uh, the lessons which we have learned, the most interesting output of this study has been that, um, uh, well, net zero power system for Nigeria can be actually a little cheaper as compared with state of, uh, as compared with status quo. Indeed, we haven't included, uh, we, we haven't accounted properly for um, uncertainties which exist for energy demand for Nigeria, and this work should be certainly continued and uh, applied to every country of the African continent. But that is what does it look like. That is um, which, uh, well, that may be helpful to shift a paradigm, paradigm, and that is actually what is it all about. And that is um, a study which has been done by, in collaboration um, of Pipe Summits Earth and Open Energy Transition, and a German think tank Agora Energiewende. They have considered Kazakhstan power system, and the question is if it is feasible to um, implement solar in, and wind faster as compared with the current uh, Kazakhstan current uh, national development plans. And the results are quite encouraging and being currently discussed on policy level. And that is output of a master study for Saudi Arabia and uh, that is a country where 99% of energy mix relies on fossil fuels. A study which uh, an author has done using pipes of earth has shown that uh, wind and solar actually can have quite, uh, uh, well, quite a place in power system of Saudi Arabia and it isn't so expensive as it could be expected. I, that is the case when um, data accessibility, data availability is a big issue. So these this results are quite preliminary because more advanced optimization methods are needed to account for this uncertainty and also account for all pathway, all transformation pathway. But what is important, what is an effect, what is an impact of this study, is translating um, conversations, translating discussion about possible futures for fossil fuel related countries from purely um, hypoth hypothetic level to a level of uh, numbers. And that is a case for Bolivia case when um, South America, when networks of South America are considered, and that is region where data of open street map data have not so good quality. So it has been needed to introduce quite some tricks to restore topology. And uh, the resulted model has been successfully validated for energy, for, for dispatch on the national level. So it works even if you don't have data of such excellent quality in OpenStreetMap. And that is a case for Malaysia. We have considered uh, decarbonization of industry. And uh, in Malaysia, mm, the, local, the local feature is, uh, well, renewable sources, renewable potential is not so excellent. So we have shown that it is basically possible to decarbonize one branch of energy sector, but if we would speak about the whole national economics, it looks like it makes absolute sense to 
um, include into modeling, into um, discussion, not only traditional on wind, off wind, and photovoltaic, also something more exotic like floating solar, or probably to consider um, cross country interconnections. So, and uh, last but not least, community is essential part of the whole story. We have different channel of communications, and uh, we are very interested, that is essential for, not, for us, to build global community. As we have seen, there are some countries of the world where um, there are still a lot of modeling evidence available, where efforts of researchers and developers are still focused. But uh, energy transition is a global thing, and if we want it to work, we need to provide tool, we need to involve people around the whole world. And um, we can unfortunately confirm that there is definitely a gap, geographic, geographic gap in free and open so, so software community. Uh, Tobias has talked about, during free, about that during previous first day. And, uh, now I think we have some understanding about reasons which, under, which are behind this gap. And uh, that is basically quite, quite simple. People, around, people in different regions just have different patterns of communication and that should be accounted for if you want to build inclusive community. And another part of the story is that uh, mm, many things which we take for granted, like uh, education or even stable internet connection, cannot be taken for granted in too many parts of the world. So, but the good news is that actually th those problems which cannot be solved alone can be perfectly, mm, can be solved if we join efforts. And, uh, well, we are doing it, we are solving them. We still have a lot to do. There are research tasks, there are validation tasks, because we can build power system model for every country of the world, but it would be nice to understand um, how close are we to reality, what are errors, what are modeling errors for each of the components, for power grids model, for installed capacity, how far we are from, from reality in demand profiles. And that validation task, it is huge. If you are interested to join, please feel absolutely free. We would be happy to accommodate you. And uh, another big task is to increase usability, in particular conda environment and uh, version conflicts inside all our Pythonic zone. That is still a big question. And, uh, we have, we would be very happy to improve it somehow. And another part relates to capacity building, relates to improvement of documentation, and to spreading the word, spreading, spreading knowledge. So again, we are very happy to accommodate any suggestions, and we are inviting contributions. If you are interested, please do not hesitate to ping us using any of uh, our ch ch channel, uh, our communication channel. So just a reminder that uh, energy transition is a global thing and can be tackled effectively only together. Thank you very much and I am very happy to take your questions. What's the role of uh, Earth observation for these models? Do you use satellite data to track um, transit lines or look, do you look for wind turbines or solar cells or is in this data set you use is just uh, you use official data sets for your modeling?
Thank you. We do not use satellite observations directly, but we are using for power grid, we are using open street map data only, while it would be great to supplement them by satellite images. We had some stream which have been focused on addition, on adding actually satellite data to open street map, but this stream currently is not very active. So that is perfectly, that, that, that would be perfect, that would work definitely, but we just don't have capacity to do that right now. Also, we would be happy to revive it. And as for installed capacities, we are using um, fusion, we are using merging of uh, a number open data sets on power plants. I am not sure if satellite observations have been used of, in any of these uh, data sets. But at least we don't make yet satellite processing ourselves, and we do not use them directly. Also, I agree with you that it would be a very interesting idea, and it would be also a perfect academic topic. Uh, there are some countries uh, which really don't want to collaborate. I don't know quite like North Korea or other, other countries where we don't get any data? Um, well, to answer uh, di directly, we have data for n Northern Korea, but um, we would be very careful about using them because when you are applying, we, we are, if you are modeling especially, uh, well, specific countries, I would be very much concerned about safety people who are affiliated with those countries. And that also goes for, Ch for China, for example, because for China there are some local regulations which basically forbid going into too much details of power system for people who are not uh, approved by national government. So I would be very careful about delicate areas of the world. But uh, technically, yes, it is possible. So m my feeling is that correct approach would be to try build collaboration in more or less uh, safe way, providing tools to people who are safe using these tools. For example, if there is, there is some group in China who is approved as approved by national authorities as experts in power systems, as people whom, whom they trust, then we may provide tool and support them in using it in the right way. Also, I agree that it is a complex question and it may go a little bit complicated. Uh, first, let me remark Agora Energiewende is a very good name in Germany, so congrats on getting them using that. And my question now, um, are you also doing storage, like water reservoirs or millions of batteries distributed? Uh, well, I agree that storage is one of the key questions when we are speaking about energy transition, and we include a number of different storage technologies, and c currently that is one of the key points of energy transition. We are able to capture them, and uh, if you are interested, please feel free to investigate the details. We would be very happy, very happy to obtain your feedback and suggestions and contributions if you see that something can be improved. Actually, we have a huge pull request which should provide interface to a big list of different storage technologies, and uh, it would be perfect if we could revive it. <laughs> oh, there you got yourself a job. <laughs> oh, do you do cheap? Uh, I was just interested. I've got a friend who I'm doing, who's a re fellow researcher, who's um, doing geothermal in Nigeria. Do you have? Ge yeah, well, he's doing it, not me. Do. You have geothermal resources in there as well? Okay, all right, good, thank you. Yes, we have geothermal, and we have quite a recent uh, request from, uh, from Kenya, where people are interested to include geothermal in a more sophisticated way. <clears throat> Thank you so much.
Thank you.